and then you slowly turn around and then all you see is a ghostly figure of a little girl right behind you. Oh, okay, that is too scary for me. <laughs> What's up, rap fam? I am back again today to cover another haunted, spooky hotel, and this one is said to be one of the most haunted hotels in all of America. And that's a big claim, because apparently there's said to be some, some paranormal activity happening in quite a few hotels in this country. The hotel we are looking into today is called the Lord Baltimore Hotel, and of course, as the name suggests, it's in Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, so I want to dive into what the heck scary stuff is said to happen here. Maybe some history, is there any kernel of truth to these scary claims? Just all that jazz that a deep dive tends to entail. So let's get to it. The Lord Baltimore Hotel. That is such a regal sounding name. Um, and I could see it being haunted. Something about the name just sounds very haunty-ish to me. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Okay. To start off these videos, I always like to go over a little bit of backstory so we have a basis of what this place is that we're talking about. And it is listed on a National Registry of Historic Places. The Lord Baltimore Hotel is a 22-story hotel, so it is quite large and in charge. From the look of it, it looks pretty typical of a French Renaissance-style hotel, you know, a lot of just big brick buildings. I could see it definitely being haunted. The Lord Baltimore Hotel was designed by William Lee Stoddard and was officially opened on the 30th of December in 1928. So it's approaching its 100th year anniversary. At the time of its construction, the hotel was the largest hotel in the state of Maryland. Right off the bat, was such a notable hotel. I can kind of see right away how people could develop some scary stories about it. I mean, it's so large. Maybe some people thought it was looming. Just a thought though. The hotel has 439 guest rooms and suites. So, I mean, again, this is just one huge hotel. So the fact that it is said to have like some ghosts running around, you know, that there's a lot of ample room, I guess, to run into something creepy at night, you know what I'm saying? Now, of course, while this hotel is quite old and quite large, it's still a hotel and it has been updated throughout the years. So there's common amenities that all hotels seem to have nowadays. You know, so if you go there, it's not like you're staying at like this hotel that was stuck in time. Cause some hotels, especially ones that are known to be incredibly haunted, they kind of play up the the whole it's haunted vibe so they try to keep like that old style of like furniture and amenities being very limited to what people would have had back then you know but apparently this is not the case in at this hotel um it does seem to have modernized quite a bit so now that we got a little bit of history in the layout of the hotel uh i think it's time to just jump right into the scary ghost stories because come on that's what we came here to see today this hotel has a plethora of ghost stories. So again, it's not like one of those cases where it's just one ghost, you know, floating around in the lobby. Uh-uh. There is many. More chances to be scared is what I'm trying to say. There is said to be a ghost of a young girl who is continuously seen on the hotel's 19th floor and even in the ballroom on some instances. Okay, that just gave me goosebumps talking about little girl ghosts, guys. Oh, oh God, they're just so common and it's just so creepy, something about it. I don't know if it's just like, cause a little girl's giggle can be like the sweetest thing, but then also the most terrifying thing if you're hearing it at 3 a.m. while walking alone in a dark hallway. Oh, okay, that's creepy. <laughs> it is said that she is seen in a long cream dress with black shoes on and she is commonly seen bouncing a red ball. Okay, this is literally giving me like shining vibes right now. I know this isn't the hotel the shining is based on, but um, you know, it's I'm still thinking of it. Oh, can you imagine being by yourself walking down a long hotel corridor? It's the middle of the night, you're tired, you just want to get to your room, take off your shoes, go to bed, you know? And maybe because this is an older building, the hallways a little darker than um, uh, more modern ones are and so as you're walking to your room, you know all of a sudden you start to hear the dribble of a ball and you think god It's really late for a little kid to be up and then you slowly turn around and Then all you see is a ghostly figure of a little girl right behind you. Oh, okay. That is too scary for me <laughs> The little girl has been said to be seen in a variety of motions as such as laughing and giggling and having fun with her red ball As well as crying and being angry or even screaming now add that to the story and you turn around and the little ghost girl is screaming at you Okay, yeah literal nightmare fuel the ghost of this little girl has been said to have been seen by a variety of guests throughout the years as well as even hotel staff and even the hotel supervisor has said to have seen this ghost guests have called down to the front desk reporting hearing a little girl laughing or crying or whatever emotion she's experiencing that day in the hall outside of the room in the middle of the night like way too late for a little kid to be 
alone doing something like that in a hotel hallway and they'll call down to ask the staff to come get the girl or call the room for her parents saying that she got out of the room and then only to find out that there is no little girl making this noise. Oh yeah, very creepy. And apparently this little girl's ghost is so well known in the hotel that they even gave her a name and they call her Molly. And one idea of how Molly got to be in this hotel, and of course it is one of tragedy. It is said during the Great Depression, her parents took her up to the top of the hotel where they all jumped to their death. And it's even said that the parents' ghosts can be seen from time to time, sometimes accompanying Molly and other times on their own. So very tragic, very sad, very spooky. I got goosebumps all over my body. Okay, yep. Yep, this is very scary. Oh, and then to make this story even creepier, as if it could get any creepier, even if you're not on the 19th floor, oh, you can still uh, run into her, apparently. It's said that if you're riding the elevator, uh, especially if you're riding the elevator by yourself and at night, the elevator will automatically go to the 19th floor, regardless if you press the button or not. And when you get taken to the 19th floor, half expecting, you know, someone to come on, because that's why the elevator went there, nope, you're greeted by hopefully nobody. And on some instances the little girl's ghost but this elevator yeah paranormal activity has also been said to have happened there too um, not only will buttons randomly said to be pressed people have said that they can actually feel the presence of somebody else in the elevator and on some instances have even reported being touched by an invisible pair of hands while in this elevator. Mm -mm, too spooky, too scary, too real, mm -mm, don't like that. Now, like I said, there are lots of ghost stories in this hotel, that was just one of them. Um, some more less descriptive ghost stories, uh, people have reported saying that they wake up in the middle of the night to seeing a dark silhouette standing over them or off to the corner in their room. Oh yeah, just watching them sleep, oh, very scary. That kind of sounds like a shadow person. What would you rather see, a shadow person or a ghost? I guess I'd rather see a ghost. I don't know. Oh, that's that's a, that's a creepy decision to have to make there. People have reported saying that their modern technology will malfunction within the hotel's walls. They'll say that their phones will not get good reception, which that kind of is understandable though because this hotel is made like out of a lot of steel. So that, that's a little bit of a rational, rational explanation to that one. But people have said like their iPods or music devices, whatever they're listening to, will randomly start going off even though no one's touching them. They'll say that the TVs will flicker on and off, just like typical ghost stuff with technology now. Then that even goes further to just unexplainable sounds. People will report hearing like someone running down the hall in the middle of the night. And then when they open the door to check, no one's there. They'll hear knocking and again, go to the door, no one will be there. They'll hear um, like rattling of uh, someone like in the bathroom or in the closet and again, nothing. Uh, so very typical ghost haunting type stuff happening, just reported by a lot of people over the years. Oh, but, huh, which is probably I think one of the scariest ghost moments or paranormal activity, I guess would be a better way of putting it. People have reported being kicked awake by a ghostly apparition. And then as soon as they wake up and they see it and they, you know, get a shock of their life, uh, it quickly disappears. So being kicked. So kind of like going back to the elevator of feeling hands. So it seems like there's some ghosts that not respecting people's personal spaces. Now, apparently the acknowledgement of this paranormal activity happening within the hotel's walls have become so prevalent and frequent that even staff members, specifically maids, will refuse to go into certain rooms that have reputations of just creepy things happening to people that enter that room. So uh, again, kind of going back to the whole ghostly sightings as well as feeling the presence or even like the actual contact with someone that's not there. Yeah, that would make me say, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing the laundry of room 212, you know? I don't blame them for that. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, you know, better safe than sorry. And then apparently, according to an article that I read online, and as always, whenever I use websites as references, I always link them down in the video's description. So if you wanna go ahead and do some more reading on this topic, you can definitely do that. But one of the websites I was reading says that two maids have actually quit their jobs because of the hauntings and the activities happening within the hotel. Oh, that's spooky. Oh yeah, so I'm thoroughly creeped out. So hey, if you're ever in the Baltimore area, 
and you want to stay in a haunted hotel? Well, here you go, I guess. Maybe one day I'll go here. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, please give it a big thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it and want to see more deep dives into these haunted places around the world. And as always, if you have a suggestion for a place we should cover, leave it down below in the, in the comments and maybe it'll get made into a video. And until next time, cue the randos and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye. And so to not leave you with pure nightmare fuel, here's a little moment of Frankie. Just sleeping away, comfortable as can be, all happy, snug as a bug in a rug, next to a creepy doll. <laughs> <laughs>